So my name is Oliver Wasonga. I work at the University of Nairobi. Um, and I just want to warn you that this is a different type of science. So we are taking a drastic shift from the what you know into indigenous uh, uh, knowledge. So um, I want to do it differently. I want to start from the end <laughs> so that uh, you get to the meat. And I start with the conclusions that there's very little demand for climate information due to lack of trust that the people have on the forecast, but also because sometimes they are not aware of what is available. That these communities use both the indigenous knowledge or indigenous early warning information as well as the conventional early warning information to make very important decisions that they have to do on a regular basis. That both the conventional early warning um, information and indigenous early warning information are subjected to verification uh, by traditional uh, experts before the forecast and advisories are released. That both approaches converge and they also um, have uh, divergent features, but most importantly that they have features that they share in common that need to be explored for integration. That when you int integrate the two to have a multi-hazard early warning system, a hybrid one, which is contextualized, acceptable, relevant, accurate, and that which contains actionable information, then they are able to effectively make decisions to do with resource use, uh, management, and also be able to put in place responses uh, for the shocks that face them. But the integration should focus on the co-production of early warning information and joint verification uh, of the same. So. Let me go back. Now I think I've told you everything. Okay. So the fact is that pastoralists largely rely on what they know. From my experience working with pastoralist community over the years, what I've realized is that they have their own ways of doing things. And one, because they trust what they know best, because They've practiced this over the years, and they've perfected, and it works for them. So they don't have to come out there looking for you to give them information. So that's one. But whenever you go down there to give them information, in most cases, for example, when it comes to climate information, then sometimes it doesn't happen the way you've told them. So they lose that trust. So they fall back to their own ways of doing things. So it's very important to understand how they manage to survive under such precarious conditions so that we learn from them. And when we learn from them, then we can co-design responses or solutions that work. OK? So. This short story is a product of uh, Taft University, uh, supported by USID. Um, and it's a very fast one, just basically to get insight into what happens in the Karamoja area, which is on the northern eastern part of Uganda, bordering Kenya on the Turkana uh, County. And what we found out is that there are four major categories of indicators that pastoralists use to predict weather or climate. And one is the biological indicators. Two is the meteorological indicators. 
and three, the astrological indicators. The fourth one, for lack of a better word, I call it supernatural or animistic indicator, okay? So for the biological indicators are mainly to do with the plant-based animal-based uh, indicators, and for the meteorological indicators, uh, things like observing the appearance and pattern of clouds, lightning, wind, dew, uh, and also temperature. The astrological indicators are mainly to do with the patterns of stars, the position of the sun, position of the moon, and for the supernatural animistic indicators, uh, some of the now very popular ones that people really want to hear about, like reading the entrails of the animals to be able to predict uh, uh, what's going to happen next. And there's also another breed of experts called the dreamers who just sleep and foretell something. There are those who read the shoes and there are those who shake the guards to tell some, foretell the future. And so they have a very elaborate uh, early warning system that starts with the prediction of use, uh, by use of the indicators that are mentioned. And then this is subjected to triangulation and interpretation by uh, the experts. And then this is now uh, processed into a forecast and advisory and action is taken. In most cases, these actions come in terms of rituals to avert, so it's a matter of evading what is likely to happen. This system has strengths. It's easily understood, accepted, and trusted by the community. It is uh, contextualized, it's readily available and accessible. It is very consultative. It provides real-time environment, environmental specific indicators and past experience. It's a multi-hazard kind of system, and it's subjected to a lot of cross-verification amongst multi-skilled traditional experts. And the emphasis is on evasion of disaster. And the biological indi indicators provide incentive to conserve plants' animal diversity. But it is also embedded in the cultural and spiritual foundation of the communities. But there are some weaknesses that sometimes validation is difficult of that, some of these indicators. And the lead time sometimes is a bit hazy and very short. It can also be inaccurate, especially uh, in the presence of changes that are occurring at the moment, environmental and climate change, and documentation and transfer is limited. And they're also changing aspirations among the youth, among generations. And one of the, some of the threats are religion and formal education. So I will end there.